Today, I'm gonna to go through how I go about setting up my patches in the Headrush pedal board to get me playing, gigging, and sounding good in no time. Hello, hello, I hope you're all doing well. Thank you to all of my new subscribers. There's been some wonderful feedback. It's been great reading through all of those. So today I'm gonna to look at the Headrush pedal board, like I said, and show you how I go about setting up my patches when I'm gonna go and perform. Now sometimes it can seem a little overwhelming diving into all of the parameters in the board. So try and have a bit of an idea of the direction that you're trying to get. So if you've got a band, for example, you can set out the clean channels and the dirty channels in an order that makes sense that you can easily get to and then play at your gig, bam, easy done. Now I know for me, I like just a one touch, easy, ready to go thing because I sing as well. So to have to stomp multiple buttons and then sing and perform and do everything at once sometimes gets a bit much and I make mistakes. So just a single press is what I'm after. So I use my board in rig mode. So I've got a clean, crunch, more heavy, uh, solo channel, and then some other things just at the top as well. And then within each one, there are some sub parameters that I can go into and press to add just a little bit more character each to each of the sounds. So like I said, it's good to have a little bit of direction before you come into setting up your rig. <laughs> I know from experience, if you don't know what you're looking for, you can sit there for just hours and just be lost by the end and have no idea what you've ended up with. And, but at the same time, you can actually have a lot of fun with some of the cool settings that are in the board. If you don't understand what all the amps are in the head rush, check out this little video that I've put together. It's gonna show you how to find out all the names just like that. So once you know sort of what sound you're going for, reach for your amp, dial it in, and then you can sort of, you can shape your tone from that point. And you can easy get what you're looking for in no time. And you don't have to muck around with all of the parameters for days on end. You can just get in, you can play, and you can do it. All right, I've talked enough. Let's dive in, let's check this out. Okay, so I have my guitar plugged in. The first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is go to my input setting and make sure that I have the guitar that I'm using set on the input. So I'm using my Mojave Burst Gibson, so hence Mojave. You can set your input patch per rig, but I tend to lock it just because I only really use one guitar at a time and I'm changing between rigs all the time, so it sort of makes more sense to keep it on the one. So I've got the guitar coming in there. First thing I'm gonna to wanna to put in is an amp. I need to make some sound. Now I know I like the Plexi amp, and for whatever reason, I've renamed and saved the Plexi Super Lead 100 as a different name, so I'm gonna pick that one. That's what I want. Now I don't want the matching cab. I personally don't really like the cabs, so I'm gonna delete that, and I'm gonna use an IR. Now I don't remember loading in this Tang 57. It's a Tangerine IR with a 57 mic. Balanced, as you can see, balanced, I think that means that it's a combination of all of the room mics and it's balanced as such. Uh, but like I said, I don't remember loading that in, so I'm pretty sure that came already in the head rush. So I think everyone should have this. If you like the sound of it, go for it. Now I've preset this one, so I've got the low cut at 91, the high cut at 85, and the gain at 8.5. 5 or negative 8.5. I'm gonna bring the high cut up to 10K here. If you don't know what that means, the high cut is just cutting everything off the top. You're gonna to be cleaning up that high fizzy sound and the low cut is just getting rid of all of that low noise that we don't really want in a mix, especially when you're playing with drums and bass. Got the mix to 100% because, well, obviously. Now, straight up, this is what we get. <laughs> So first thing I wanna do is make sure that my output setting isn't peaking. Slow on that one just a bit. Now if you don't really understand the input and output settings, I have a video just here. Check that one out and it'll explain it all for you. Now that's sitting good there. So now this is where you want to decide how do you want your sound? How do you want your distortion? Do you want it to come from the amp or do you want it to come from a pedal? Let's boost the normal volume.
cool. So I think that sounds pretty good just here in the room. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load in just the sort of things that I use. So I always use a volume. Now, every once in a while, I do like to use a wah. I don't use one on every rig, but I'm gonna load one anyway. I'm gonna use the black wah. I've got another video just here on wahs. Out of all of the head rush, I definitely think the black wah is the best. So I'm gonna go with that. Let's move this. Do, 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 do. How good is this interface, by the way? <laughs> it's brilliant. All right, so now we want some ambience. Let's get a reverb. Again, it always obviously depends on what you're trying to achieve with your sound. I want this to be my go-to heavy rock sound. So I'm just gonna get, let's try a medium, uh, medium plate. Now a mix already, I don't want that that big. I know that. I want the tails on, because I love that spillover. Pre-delay, I like to set around about 20 to 25. Let's say 20 today. <laughs> Because I do a lot of mixing, I always tend to put my reverb at the end, but... Today, I'm gonna to make the cab the last one because it actually sounds pretty good. Now that reverb's a bit big for me, especially for just a standard sort of rocky thing. I want there just to be a little bit of... I want there just to be a little bit of something. Cool. Let's bring in some overdrive. I always tend to reach for the tube screamer. Let's go to default. Sounded pretty good. So now I can, um, I'm gonna change that. I hate that, that the default is orange. It should be green, so make it green. Now that there, that's already pretty usable. So we can assign our green to one of the foot pedals and have that come in and out. This is off. There's kind of a two channel thing there. Back the amp just a little. That's interesting, I don't even know how to play that song. <laughs> All right, so there's our two channel thing. We've got like a bit of a boost. Now, what I always tend to do now is I go for an EQ. I like the parametric EQ because it gives me a lot more control. I've mucked around with the default settings. Now, I forgot to mention at the start as well, I set up in the global settings a little bit of EQ all the time. I'm using the line out at the moment. So I've got a low cut here at 50. Some of the low mid has been cut at 260, high mid there, cut at 250. Five, and my default there is already at 10. How about that? So this is default across the board. It's gonna be on everything. I cut this at 50 because I do a lot of looping and when I have an octave thing for a bass, I don't want it to be cut as high as I do for the guitars. So I cut it at, at 50 there. I have another video just here about the parametric EQ. It's gonna explain everything in here, but this is how I do it. So let's reset it all to the, just normal. All right, cool. I'm gonna put the Tube Screamer on. <laughs> Now, as you can tell, it's pretty annoying having to play and then press the button and then play and press the button. So turn your looper on. Now this guy here, this is gonna be pre or post your input. So put it to pre, record. Now that's obviously gonna play back what you just recorded. So if we turn all this off, go back to our looper, That is now just the dry signal. You can now treat this without having to turn on and off your guitar. So let's do that real quick. Go back to the looper, start it up.
So it's a fairly subtle change, but you can hear why I do things the way I do and why I've got these default settings here because I know already that for the way for the guitars I use and the amp models I use and the IR that I use, I'm not gonna like somewhere around that frequency. So I just cut it just a little bit and it just cleans it up and makes it sound a lot more pleasant and nice. So from this point on, you would just go in and save it, save a new rig, put a new name. I'm not gonna do that because I don't want to, I don't want to chalk up my pedal board with stuff I'm not gonna be able to use. I already have a few rigs that I like and I'm happy with those. But from this point, let's um let's expand. So now I want a lead channel. Now there's a number of ways you can go about this from this point. You can either add to this rig or you can save this as a second rig and manipulate it and come up with something else and use it in rig mode. Personally, I use most things in rig mode. However, I do have a couple of patches where I have delays and things that I can turn on and off. So let's put in a chorus. Mono, let's go this one. I like that there. Uh, sometimes I like to have a phaser. Now the order of these is completely up to you. Try it uh, before and after distortion. Let's go the orange phaser. That's good, I like that one. The sync is obviously gonna match your tempo. So again, use that to your discretion. Pretty cool. I like delay. Let's try the tape. I always like my delays set. So the tail's on and the sync always on. That's pretty intense right there. Good feedback, but way too loud. Yeah, that's nice. Cool, that's pretty good. Now, we want a bit more of a boost. So what are we gonna do to boost? A couple of options. We can either bring in a compressor, another boost, but a very handy one that I like is just to grab a graphic EQ this time. Let's just grab our default and let's just see what we can do with it. So again, pre or post amp. That's not really much difference there, so I, I can definitely notice it when I put it here. Right, so what I wanna do now is find some frequencies that I wanna cut through when I boost my solo. So I want the mids to come up. tape back on, got this guy on, let's have a chorus in. So there's a few things that we can already do. We can set up so that all of these come in at once. So we've got this channel here and then with one little press, if we go into our uh, hardware assign now, what I can do is for example, make this scene here and I can turn on, let's leave, oops, on, 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 on. So there, so that first scene, every time once I assign that to that pedal, if I, once I press this scene, that's gonna turn on the amp, the graphic EQ, the tape echo, and my overdrive. So there's my lead channel. And then I can set up this second scene here, turn that off, turns the tape off, and there, now that second scene, that would be my main rig. So we probably just flip, flip, flip those around. So first, this is gonna be my main rig, 
and this is gonna be my solo rig. So that's a couple of options there, a couple of ways that you can load up a quick three channel rig there. You've got your overdrive on and off, then you've got your boost and the tape delay and a couple of little effects that you can bring in and out. From this point, let's make a clean rig. Let's load up something completely different. Same thing here, I know I like these Black Prince amps. Significantly quieter. That's all right. So even that right there, that's a second rig straight away. I've got, I always use the same IR. So that's an easy setup for me. And then for the EQ, I would repeat the same process as before, just because let's change our delay. Got a dynamic delay this time. Now I really like a dotted eight. But I like to hear it. So let's bring that up. Let's bring in the chorus. Love it, that sounds so good. You can probably get that feedback up a little. When I'm doing a dotted eight thing, I leave all this stuff at zero. I don't like it being mucked around with too much and I always cut it. It doesn't get in the way of my guitar, but it's still got a fair bit of that feel to it. Stereo is off in this example. My dotted eight, I like to be straight up the middle. Always put your tails on guys. Always have your delays and your reverbs spill over. Now for ex this example, let's change up our reverb. Let's put in, yeah, Bright Hall. Whoa! You probably noticed the screen changed a little bit there. I just bumped the camera and knocked it over. Good job, Dave. All right, so this already looks good, actually. Not too bright this time. This has a vibrato, which is mad. Pretty intense. How's that for a clean rig, hey? Sounds pretty good. So as I mentioned, I use my board in rig mode pretty much all the time. And here now is an example of what it sounds like when I loop all this stuff together. There we go. I hope that's cleared up a few things for some of you guys. As you can see, when you know what you're looking for, you can get in and you can get your sound in no time flat. 
Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned. I'll see you next time. Yeah.